Science has solved many of the world's biggest mysteries, but some remain. Gravity works how? Can pet fish foretell earthquakes? Why do we yawn often? Things we don't know and how near we are to understanding? Today, we are going to talk about top 10 science questions that still baffle experts. Before starting, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Number 10. How many species are there? For more than 200 years, taxonomists have discovered, named, and organizedly described species, and they're probably far from finished. They aren't slacking off at work either, that's for sure. Scientists have discovered more than 16,000 new species annually during the past 10 years alone, totaling 1.2 million in their list. But how many remain uncovered is anyone's estimate. The 300,000 active taxonomists must make informed assumptions because it would take a lifetime to find every single species. These extrapolations have significant logistical challenges. Hotspots for biodiversity are frequently found in underdeveloped nations, which have a taxonomist deficit. Furthermore, up to 80% of the life on the Earth may be evading detection in inaccessible locations beneath the water. Number 9. What's the deal with gravity? Gravity is the weakest of the four natural forces. It keeps the universe together, but it's weaker than electromagnetism, weak nuclear forces, and strong nuclear forces. How much littler? The next level, weak nuclear, is 10 carat 26 times stronger. Gravity's weak pull makes lab demonstrations with small items difficult. Gravity also clashes with other forces. Quantum theory and general relativity cannot explain small-scale gravity. Incompatibility prevents physicists from achieving a unified theory of everything. Poor science can't even determine gravity's composition. All other fundamental forces are associated with particles that carry them. Yet even the most powerful supercolliders have failed to identify the hypothetical graviton. Some scientists are frustrated by its enigmatic nature, but others recognize its gravity's way. The force brings us down. Number 8. Are there human pheromones? Can fear be smelled? Or detect a rat? Pheromones are used by many animals, but whether humans use them is debatable. There's evidence that chemo signals cause behavioral and physical changes, but scientists don't know which chemicals do it. Despite what cologne and hair gel labels say, no component has been identified as a human pheromone or connected to a response. If people emit pheromones, scientists don't know how others detect them. Many mammals and reptiles have pheromone-detecting vomeronasal organs. Sensory neurons have minimal or no link to the nervous system. Hence, some noses may not work. So far, the answer is maybe. It stinks to be unknown. Number 7. How do organs know when to stop growing? All mammals start as one cell and expand into trillions. Usually, cells, tissue, and organs are tightly controlled, but sometimes things go wrong, causing cancer or a bigger leg. The stop growing signal comes from what? The Salvador Wurtz Hippo signaling pathways, four key proteins, appear to govern organ growth. Shoot of signals down the pipeline deactivate the growth-promoting protein, but scientists know nothing more. The source of these signals and other factors impacting SWH are unknown. Scientists are identifying new triggers and working their way to the source, but many questions remain, including how to turn off cancer. Number 6. Can animals really predict earthquakes? The concept that our furry and feathery pals can warn us of approaching disaster is nice but scientists have struggled to prove it. Pet owners have reported their pets acting strangely before earthquakes since ancient Greece. There are many accounts, although most are anecdotal, based on animal, normal, and funny traits. Stories are usually reported decades afterward. Animals may feel and react to environmental changes we don't see, such as seismic waves or electric or magnetic fields. It's unclear if earthquakes produce precursors. Regardless of the cause, testing is practically impossible. Without earthquake predictions, we don't know when to monitor animals, making it harder for researchers to replicate the experiment. The few lucky animal experiment quakes yield conflicting findings. Consult a seismologist cat for earthquake advice. Number 5. How does memory work? Neuroscientists believed memories were kept in scattered hippocampus or neocortex neurons for a long time. 
The notion was initially tested last year by MIT researchers who activated or deactivated neurons to make mice recall or forget an incident. It's crucial, but the brain needs the right neurons to recall a memory. How the brain does the trick is unknown. Human and rodent brain imaging suggests that some of the same neurons affected by the original experience are participating. Thus, remembering something may need reforming the memory each time it's retrieved. Number 4. What was Like's last universal common ancestor? A whale, bacterium, octopus, and orchid may appear unrelated, but they belong together. Proteins, nucleic acids, and other small life components are almost universal, according to research. All organisms have the same genetic code. Major branches of life's family tree share a limited core of genomic sequences. All of this shows that all cell-based life has a common progenitor. This idea is sound theoretically. Getting this ancestor to take a paternity test is harder. Researchers believe the last universal common ancestor, Leucidae, split into bacteria and eukaryotes 2.9 billion years ago. There is little fossil evidence from that epoch, and the genes that have passed down the family tree have been lost, swapped, or scrambled. Number 3. Why do placebos work? Researchers require a control group to compare a new medicine in clinical trials. These participants receive a placebo, a tablet without active components, instead of the medication. Many control subjects feel the drug's effects. At least they claim to. Exactly what happens to placebo poppers is unknown. Some investigations have revealed objectively quantified effects that match genuine drugs. Others discovered that placebos made patients feel better, regardless of their real improvement. This ambiguous evidence could support many hypotheses. There could be a physiological response, Pavlovian conditioning, a patient expects to feel better after medicating, pleasant patient-doctor interactions, an unconscious desire to do well in a clinical trial, or a natural symptom improvement. Pharmaceutical corporations want to understand the placebo effect because it can disrupt clinical trials. About 50% of real medications fail late-stage trials due to Faker's effects. This is a hard pill for researchers who have spent nearly 10 years attempting to market their medications. Number 2. Why do people spontaneously combust? We know humans spontaneously combust. A impoverished Italian knight who burned after drinking excessive wine in the mid-17th century was one of the earliest. Although the cause of the fireworks is unknown, experts are persuaded that each event is less spontaneous than it appears. Over decades, 120 incidences of spontaneous human combustion have been reported. However, most involve smokers, thus an outside flame is suspected. Tobacco burns the skin and splits it deep enough to allow body fat to seep quickly through burning garments, acting like candle wax and a wick. It's more likely than the alternative that enzymes ignite methane gases in the intestines. Testing both theories is problematic. Researchers cannot randomly set individuals on fire. However, an alternative may answer the question. Pig tissue burns like the wick effect, making samples easier to collect. Who knew bacon could solve Spinal Tap's drummer mystery? Number 1. Why do we yawn? Two causes for yawning seem reasonable following experimental tests, but theories are as prevalent as unhappy toddlers at nap time. One is that yawns chill and boost brain performance. The State University of New York at Albany Psychologists think it explains why humans yawn when tired. Yawns, like computer fans, occur when performance lags. Our brains start working better when we yawn, but why is it contagious? A brain cooling camp may help keep the group safe and vigilant. A pack may need to yawn when a member is underperforming to increase cognition. There are other theories, though. Contagious yawning may also foster empathy between yawners. Sympathetic yawning shows empathy and instinctively communicates. Me too, buddy. Which story is true? Before declaring a winner, scientists need to sleep on it. That's a wrap for today's video. What are your thoughts on our list? Let us know in the comments section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more future videos.